Welcome YouTube, it is your man in Japan, Jay Contra. And people in America might have the space for a gaming room, but here in Japan, I only have the room for a gaming closet. It is time to pull back the curtain, open the door, and show off some of the Jay Contra collection. Now in here, this is about, um, I'd say probably half, probably even a little bit less of all the games and the systems that I have because every Christmas time I will go home with two giant bags filled up to the maximum capacity of 50 pounds with video games and I'll shove them into my closet back home much to my parents chagrin and so what I'll do is I'll show you all the games that I have on hand as well as all the systems I'm trying to get all of the systems that have ever come out at least one of, you know, one of each to be able to play all the games that I have. Um, maybe one day I will achieve that goal, but first here is my um, not actually working Game Gear. The problem with the Game Gear is the capacitors, and the one that I bought, it, I think I bought this, it was supposed to be working at the time, but then just over, over a couple days of playing it ended up crapping out. And this, this is actually a cool limited edition Ray Earth Sega Game Gear, but it's like worth like 200 bucks if it was actually working, but it isn't anymore and I might get it repaired one day. Uh, I still got to work on that. It's something that still also kind of works and you'll notice I've got a lot of junk stuff. <laughs> this was one of the first thing I ever bought when I came to Japan. Uh, this is the Famicom Color Game Boy Advance SP. This has actually become really sought after, unfortunately. Mine is working, however, it has this like red and green line going through the LCD screen at the very top. I haven't been able to figure out how to repair that. So what ended up happening was I had to buy just a normal uh, pink Game Boy Advance SP to play to play the backlit, the beautiful backlit screen, even though it's not, we did not get the AGS 101 or whatever it's called out here in Japan. So we only have the normal backlight. No, no cool three stage backlight or whatever. I also um, have been buying the, the Famicom Minis, the Super Famicom Mini. I mean, I, I haven't been buying, I've only been buying one of each. Because, well, I mean, 80 bucks for one of these things, I'm not going to be buying more than one. And I also, well, I guess I technically do have two because back when I was home for Christmas last, I ended up having to go to the Nintendo store in New York. I was visiting a friend and I managed to pick up a Super Nintendo Classic. Uh, I think around now I'm filming in July. And they, I think these have just gone back on the shelves. And then I also have what is what was once super valuable. These were going for like two hundred dollars. I, I managed to pick mine up because I went to went to the shop on a Saturday morning to get their fresh shipment in from Nintendo. I got a Famicom Classic Mini. So those are some beautiful systems. We'll leave those down there for now. Um, Oh yeah, there's my Super Scope. I'm actually kind of afraid of uh, taking that back to America simply because uh, I'm afraid of taking back anything that resembles a gun <laughs> through, through customs. I don't want to take any chances even though it is quite toy-like. Here's my Neo Geo CD Controller Pro, complete in box. Well, I guess it doesn't have the instruction manual with it, so I don't know if it's actually complete or not. But I do love the box. I love the Neo Geo CD. We'll talk about that once I get... Uh, to the console area. Here's my Zap Gun. This is actually, you know, this is just a third-party manufactured modern Zap Gun that I used in the Famicom simply because in Japan, the gun accessory is shaped like an actual six-shooter. Like, there's no way I would be waving that around in America. And they also didn't really seem to manufacture any past the first run, so you don't find the shooting peripheral for the Famicom here in Japan all that often. When you do, it's quite expensive, so I ended up just spending like 10 bucks when I was in America last time. Uh, then that brings us to, for collecting purposes only, is the Famicom Network Adapter, which was a cool modem that plugged into the Famicom and lets you look at stock prices. Uh, I think you could read reviews of games or like, you know, star ratings. I always thought this box kind of looked like those uh, those weird like paper cups that they sold back in the 1990s. Does that make any sense? Is that ringing any bells for anybody? Uh, here is, oh yeah, here's my Wii U box. This is a real big complete set. It has a Super Mario Brothers U, a Wii Party U. I think, I, oh yeah, I bought this from Costco. Uh, they had a real good deal on it. And I think I bought it so I could play Mario Kart. 
Was that right? I can't remember. But oh well, it, the Wii U has served me well. And this huge monster of a box is my Hori Arcade Stick uh, for the Xbox 360. This is what I used to play all of the cool Xbox 360 shooters put out by companies like Cave and so on. Which I actually need to get more of those. That's, those are, I think, are going to explode in price in a few years. Uh, and then here, yes, here is the Infinite Climax edition of Bayonetta. In Japan, we were, we were lucky to get uh, boxed copies of both the original Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2 for the Switch. And while I have these for a lot of other systems, I will take any excuse to play Bayonetta, especially if I can get it in 60 FPS. Uh, here is my uh, box for my V Saturn. This was a Japan exclusive variant of the Sega Saturn. I actually have it down here. This is what I used to play all of my Sega Saturn games. The V Saturn was put out by, obviously, Victor, the Japanese electronics manufacturer. Uh, Sega licensed the Sega Saturn console out to, I think, like Hitachi, and I think maybe JVC might have made one. I can't remember exactly. I just thought this was really cool and isn't something you see every day. So that's why I keep it here. I think I have a, like another, I think I have the white Saturn as well. Uh, but that's back in America, along with a bunch of my other consoles. Um, here, oh yeah, there's my Red DS that I picked up on sale from Gayo. Uh, that's where I buy a lot of new games and a bunch of used newer games. Like for example, this, uh, this Dissidia version of the PSP I ended up buying at Gayo, which is kind of like a, it's kind of like a blockbuster slash GameStop because it's where you rent movies and manga and you can't rent video games in Japan. However, you can, um, they do have used video games there. Uh, so they had a bunch of PSP stuff that they were trying to get rid of last year. And that's why I bought this really cool uh, Final Fantasy PSP. Uh, the only thing to look out for PSPs though is that the battery will end up uh, like expanding and not exact, not exactly exploding, but will possibly wreck your PSP if you don't take the battery out. And that's something that actually does concern me, especially because I haven't played my PSP in a long time. Rounding out, oh yes, the, so the thing about the Game Boy, the Game Boy Pocket has really exploded in value. And some of the, one of the things about Japan is that people will often just have stuff in their closets forever, and then they'll just go to like a local, um, like a hard off or to a book off, and they'll they'll have almost new uh, consoles that they'll just sell and they'll just like they, they the book offs or the hard off don't really care that much about condition and they won't they won't give them really what it's worth so i have near here what is essentially a like new game boy i guess the person bought it and didn't really use it i remember the thing about this is that it's got no no scratches or anything no damage or anything to the console itself the only problem with the box is that Game Boy Pockets in Japan, they came with a set of uh, batteries. And the batteries had actually never been used to the point that because it had been sitting in here for like, you know, 15, 20 years, um, you can actually tell there's the discoloration from the battery leaking onto the box, which is unfortunate uh, for the condition of the box. But I don't really care just because I love, I love this Game Boy Pocket. It's amazing. And this is something that's become super valuable. Game Boy stuff in general has really climbed in price. Then what else do I have? Oh yeah, then there's um, my uh, my Final Fantasy PS4. This is the Final Fantasy Type Type Zero. It's kind of red, I hope you can tell there. Uh, this is I one of the reasons I won't buy a PS4 Pro is because I love the red PS4 and they don't have a red PS Pro as far as I know. I might get a white one, I'm not sure. And then here is my Lightning version two. This is for Final Fantasy 13 2. Uh, it's a really cool black PS3 that has uh, a really cool like purple and pink version of lightning on it, which I thought was real, real neat. Oh, so let me hold on, let me make sure you guys are looking at something cool while I, while I move some of the boxes around so I can show you some of the other cool stuff that I have managed to collect in my time here. Let's see. Okay, so I actually like what I like to do is I. Uh, when I go home, I will take video games back with me, but usually for the, I have access to all of my CD-based games. I keep all of my CD-based games with me in these binders here. Um, so I've got, uh, let's see, I've got my PC Engine games, Neo Geo CD, Sega games, so Sega Saturn um, and Dreamcast, Wii, Wii U, Xbox, maybe Xbox 360. Uh, then these are my PS1, PS2, PS3 games. And so let's open up one of these bad boys. I'll show you. I'll show you my, 
Oh, I think that. I think that. Oh, those those fall off the back of a truck. I don't know what those are for. Uh, but here are my Neo Geo CD games. Uh, I think we've got the very obviously titled stuff. I love how they just kind of spell it out for you. Here we've got the Neo Geo CD game, also two, which is a cool shooting game. And then we have a bunch of King of Fighters games, King of Fighter '94. Um, here's oh, let's see, Fighters. Hold on, Fightazu History Dynamite. Oh, Fighter History Dynamite. Okay, great. It is a great battle action game. <laughs> and then all the Neo Geo games kind of are a bit drab, more or less. I mean, we got a bit of a face variation here. We've got the Samurai Spirits RPG. Um, here we've got um, Samurai, another Samurai Spirits game. Oh, and then we got oh Sonic Wings 2, which is a really cool shooting game. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's a sample of my CD-based games. Now let's show the consoles themselves. There's my uh, Majora's Mask, uh, Majora's Mask holder for my Majora's Mask Special Edition Game Boy or Game Boy. I'm really dating myself. The Nintendo D 3DS. Uh, I love Majora's Mask, my favorite game of all time, and that's why I went all out with the DS version. And then here's the Virtua Stick. This is the heavy duty, uh, this is the heavy duty fight stick, arcade stick for the Sega Saturn. This is really cool. It's really solid. And it still has the sticker on here. I bought this from a hard off for about fifteen dollars. I bought this a few years ago. This is what I used to play all my Saturn shooters that I that I like to pull out every once in a while. And so we were just looking at Neo Geo CD games before, and I play them on this bad boy. This is the Neo Geo CDZ. Uh, this is a fast loading version of the Neo Geo CD. The Neo Geo CD in Japan has really kind of taken off in the last few years to the point where these are some very, not only very expensive console, but very expensive games. You can see you can fit in the two, uh, fit in the two controllers, and then it's also got S Video out, which is very nice. I love S Video. Here's uh, my PC Engine workhorse. This is the Dual R. I actually didn't spend a whole lot on this. Tokyo prices for this thing are real expensive, but when you're living in the middle of nowhere like me, you can sometimes find a deal on these guys. Although I'm not sure if I might only have mono output on this just because maybe some one of the solder joints has gone cold. I really gotta look into that. But the thing about the, CD, the Duo R is that it's much more reliable, ironically, uh, given my, my, <laughs> my console's current condition, the Duo R is much more reliable in terms of its capacitors than the black PC Engine Duo. And then one controller port. What were we even thinking? One controller port for these guys? Just played Ronda of Blood. That was a fantastic game. Can't believe I hadn't played it before. And then here is my Model 1 Mega Drive. Uh, this is the Model 1. It's a very interesting console because it only outputs mono audio via the back port. But then in the front, it has, it has a, um, a stereo headset uh, input or output that you can plug your headphones into. And it's even got a little gauge so that you can uh, decrease and increase uh, the sound the love the sound levels uh, don't collect for the japanese sega genesis uh, you're going to be in for a world of hurt because of all the price increases there's my xbox 360 which i will break out uh, maybe like once a year so that i can play a cave shooter on it uh, once again to pair it with my giant hori uh hori arcade stick uh, yeah, that's that's all I'll say about that because there's not much else to say. Here's the, the toaster, the AV Famicom. The AV Famicom is a necessity if you really want to play uh, Japanese Nintendo games simply because it outputs uh, via the composite or the whatever the yellow, red, and white cables are um, because the original Famicom, uh, which, you know, that one up there in the very back is mimicking the original Famicom only output via coaxial. And so you're in, you, you're gonna see the jail bars on a lot of TVs. So that's why you got to get the AV Famicom. Uh, what else do I got? Oh man, the Neo Geo Pocket Color. I have not played this in years, but it's still here, and I gotta get, really get around to this. Unfortunately, it's another system, much like the Game Boy. A lot of the prices on the games themselves have really gone up. Here's my PlayStation Two. Uh, this is what I used to play PS One and. Uh, PS2 games. 
uh, the PlayStation 2 in Japan has really held its value. It's kind of gone up to about maybe $100 or even $200 for a complete system, depending on where you are. But if you go to a hard-off, you'll find graveyards of these things, and most of them are in working order. So I might I bought this for like $5, and I did not regret it. I do have a couple back in America, but for 5 bucks, I mean, it's a completely working system. I've played a bunch of games on this already. And so you, sometimes when you take you, when you gamble with junk, you'll usually you'll usually win. Usually. Here is my Jusco. Uh, apparently, it's rare on American eBay. This can go for I think like two hundred dollars plus, even if it's loose. But in Japan, I found these for like thirty dollars. About um, maybe because where I live, people really don't know what they have. I bought this from a hard off, I think, or maybe even a Mongo Soko, just a you know a used recycle shop. Um, so these are really aren't that expensive. So if you're in Japan and you're collecting for the N64, keep an eye out for these guys. Um, that's my N64 that I play games on. Uh, here is an American Wii. Uh, so when you're a foreigner in Japan, you tend to hook up with other foreigners via Facebook groups or something else where there will be uh, groups where people, they only tend to stay in Japan for a one or two or maybe even a few extra years. Um, but they'll usually try and get rid of their games or their consoles that they don't want to haul back to America. Uh, they might have brought, I think the person who sold this, you know, people bring their consoles with them a lot of the time. And then they just don't want to bring them back. So you can kind of get a deal on a lot of American systems. Um, but you can kind of hack it and do a lot of cool things with the American Wii. Here's my recently picked up Wonderswan Color. I bought this in Hokkaido. I bought it some Final fantasy games to go with it still actually haven't played this yet <laughs> gotta turn that on and make sure it works uh here's a casio loopy here's another console that i haven't actually turned on and the reason is because i have i bought this in the junk section uh, but i just haven't been able to find a uh a, the power cord that goes with it um here's little romance this is a game that goes for it a lot of the casio loopy games had the ability to print uh going to open yeah there we go you can print stickers with it using special cartridges i actually don't know if you can get that that sticker paper anymore uh, but this cartridge is empty uh, it's a, an interesting system that no one seems to really talk about all that much it was marketed towards women uh, back in the 90s but it kind of died a sort of ignoble death uh, there's a, a virtual boy that I also bought from the junk section. I had a hard, I, one of my virtual boys. Uh, it ended up dying on me. One of the one of the lenses or one of the projectors stopped working, so I ended up just buying this from a, from a, from a hard off, and it was like it was ten dollars, and it works fine. And you just couple it with the controller and the AC adapter, and everything works grand. So let's go to the games themselves. So we have all the CD-based games over there and then all of my cartridge games and all of the CD games that I keep, uh, that I have them in, still in the box or still in the, you know, the jewel case. Uh, I keep them in boxes to try and sort of organize them down here. I also keep the cords separate uh, for my console just to make uh, things easier. Here's all my power bricks and the thing weighs like a ton of bricks. Here's, um, we're going to kind of go through this real quick just so that I don't bore you all. Here's a pink uh, Hello Kitty. Uh, you can see if you got the Jap it's Japanese keyboard for the Dreamcast. I actually have a pink Dreamcast back in America that I'll pair that with. And I thought this controller just looked real cool, so I'm going to buy that. <laughs> uh, what else do I got? Oh, here's a bunch of PSP games, a bunch of, a bunch of Geos. A bunch of the, the shops here trying to get rid of their PSP stuff. So I obliged them and ended up picking up a bunch of things. Here's a here's some really cool uh, Virtual Boy games that I got to get around to playing. I will one of these days. Oh, Xevious. Super Xevious. Can't recommend Xevious enough. And then here's a really cool copy that I bought for like five bucks back in Hokkaido. A sequel. Uh, what else? Um, there's, yeah, some Super Famicom games. Here's all my, there's all my Famicom games that I can't play because my, my Famicom, AV Famicom bit the dust. And so I think what I'll end out the video on is, uh, my rares. Um, so in Japan, because we're, we do get hit by natural disasters sometimes. Thankfully, I live in a very, uh, a very safe area, but I do have some, all of my rare games I keep in these two boxes right here, just in case I need to get out of Dodge. Uh, this is my Konami box. This is where I keep all of my Castlevania games and my Contra games, because those are some of my, my two favorite series. Here's the Famicom Contra. This used to be a super expensive game, and it still kind of is. Uh, here's the original Drac here's the original uh, Akumajo Dorakura. Uh, th this was the cartridge version of what was originally 
the uh, the Famicom disc version. This ended up getting released in like 92 or 93, and it's a very expensive Famicom game now. Uh, but then a lot of Famicom games have become very expensive. Uh, what else do I got here? Yeah, like for example, the Super Famicom version of it's not it's don't call it Rondo of Blood. It's Castlevania Dracula Double X or XX or I think in America it was just Drac Castlevania Dracula X. And then of course, <coughs> excuse me. Then of course there are the DS, uh, the DS Castle, the Igavanias. As, as, they are, as they are known, as well as some other, I think, what else do I have in here? Oh yeah, here's Ikaruga. I recently bought this on a trip to Tokyo. This just got released on the Switch. Uh, what else did I get? Oh, here's Alza Dick. I really want to play this for, on the PC Engine. You can stick that into my Turbo Duo. Then here's my Super Famicom box. Well, here's one that's also got Famicom. So this is Famicom, uh, Super Famicom. This is, uh, oh yeah, Thrakia 776 Fire Emblem. Uh, this was a this is originally came out for the, super, the for the Nintendo Power System where you would go and get a blank cartridge and then rewrite it at convenience stores. This ended up getting released in like 1999 or something like well after the Super Nintendo was basically dead, and that's why it's become a really expensive Super Famicom game. Um, here's oh Little Samson um, in Japan. This is only worth like a hundred bucks, uh, so I picked it up. And we got Final Fight Tough. Uh, this is more expensive than it should be because it's not a very good Final Fight game. Uh, here's, oh yeah, Get Her Love, the one expensive N64 game. Uh, this can go for like $200 plus for some reason. I don't know why exactly it's sought after. It is a fun kind of party game uh, that I would recommend maybe playing sometime. But don't 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 buy this. Don't buy N64 games. They're not going up in price. Even Bangayo, which had a limited, super limited print run, um, I think of like 10,000 copies. It's not really even worth that much. I, I, paid pro I probably overpaid for it when I first came to Japan and it hasn't gone up in value at all. But then we've got my crown jewel, one of my favorite shooters of all time, Summer of Carnival 92, Rekka. Um, I actually did not buy this in Japan uh, because it's super expensive when you see this in the shops. This can go for $1,000 plus complete. I ended up buying this on eBay for significantly less just picking it up off a collector who was trying to get, you know, trying to get rid of it. So that's it. I'm going to end it here. That's all my stuff. Well, this is about half my stuff. Everything else is back in America. Here's some shoe boxes full of stuff that I'm going to be taking back with me once Christmas rolls around. Here's some even more. Here's all my N64 games that I got to get around to playing one of these days. Yep. So I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I've been Jay Contra and mahalo.